Hello again, fellow refiners. This is Tony and Christine here again from the Refinement Not Retirement podcast. And we're here to talk about Trump's criminal trial from a British perspective. But before we jump into it, let I'll let my wife and co-host say hello to everyone. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, getting a little stressed about this uh, election year in the USA, that's for sure. Um, and uh, having realised that we are going to be there during this time, it's an even bigger worry based on uh, what we're probably going to talk to everybody about today. Yeah, um, we should we should perhaps explain that we, we have quite a long history of... of uh, all things America, don't we? I mean, our business was very much centered around American clients. Yes. We spent a lot of time there throughout our time together, working together and enjoying ourselves together. We spent a lot of time in America, have a lot of American friends. Um, and it's it's really both sad uh, and also a little bit exciting to see what's going on, to be living through this completely unparalleled, unprecedented um, stage in history. When I recorded my last update, my last Trump update, which was part six, this is part seven today, that was at the end of May. And the matter had just gone to the jury. We were all wondering how long the deliberations were going to take. Was it going to be quick? Was the verdict going to be quick? Was it going to go on for weeks? Um, there were all kinds of opinions. Uh, around that uh, we went away uh, after just after I recorded that uh, quick update uh, we went to the Yorkshire Dales and onto the Lake District to celebrate my birthday with with the family and to meet our new uh, granddaughter uh, and we will actually by the way be doing an, um, an episode covering that trip uh, which is obviously a very different topic to the one we're talking about today uh, but while we were away um, on the 30th of May, um, at a late time of the day in the UK, uh, we'd just come back from our, uh, come back to our Airbnb in a little place called Ambleside in the Lake District. On the 30th of May, we'd just come back, and well, you tell the story from there. Well, I think I think you were. I said to you, do you think there's anything? Um going on uh, because uh, the, the jury were out, weren't they? They were deliberating and they'd yep. been deliberating. It was it from the Wednesday or the Thursday? Because the Thursday was the 30th. Had they got the instructions I don't know, on the they, Wednesday? But they made their, ver they, they came back with their verdict within two days of deliberating. Del deliberation. Yeah, well, I think, no, I think they were given the, I think they were given it on the Wednesday. So I think there was the, um, Wednesday afternoon and then the whole of Thursday. And I said yeah. to you, do you think there's anything happening? And you had said earlier that you thought that it, they would come back quite quickly and you had a feeling. So when I said to you, let's see if there's anything going on, you you immediately said, no, no, it's, it's far too early. Nothing will have happened yet. We were kind of thinking it would be on the Friday, weren't we? We thought yeah. that would be the... Um, that that would that would be the that that would be the day before the weekend and um we put on uh, uh uh youtube because that's where we follow most of the um you know progress of what's going on and uh the midas touch were busy talking and suddenly said uh said um we have uh, the the jury have passed a note to the judge um, and very quickly, uh, that's how it evolved, wasn't it? Was there everybody yes. pulled back well, in? That, I think that the, even the judge was surprised by the fact that they had a verdict. I think they sent a note, and they, nobody was quite clear what they were going to talk about. Were they going to ask to see more evidence? Yes. They had requested evidence. When they requested that evidence uh, that they wanted to have read back, um, it, it was quite telling what they were actually focusing on. And so it was looking as though uh, that they were um, seeing if Michael, Michael Cohen's um, testimony could be uh, co corroborated or was corroborated by that other guy whose name um, escapes me. The Pecker. Guy. Pecker. Pecker. 
Pecker. Yeah, the, the guy who's the National Inquiry guy. And I think they obviously compared those bits of um, testimony. And I think they must have very quickly decided that it was very comprehensively uh, corroborated. And so they uh, so they said, we've got a verdict. So so they, that's what happened. So it was ver it was late. We'd just come back from dinner. Uh, we we didn't have the equipment with us to be able to record a proper episode at that point with our sort of live reaction, as it were. Uh, but we did jump onto uh, the Refinement Not Retirement Facebook page, and we did a quick Facebook live um, to say... You were so excited. And it was, was just yeah, about your was. birthday, and you were best birthday present it, ever. It, it was. Um, and uh, he was found guilty, I think, quite correctly uh, on the basis of listening well not, i couldn't listen to the evidence live of course because that wasn't available to anybody but other than those who were sitting in the courtroom but uh, he was found guilty on all 34 uh, counts uh, and he will uh, be sentenced on the 13th of july but now what oh gosh so now we have the the first president we had before the the uh, verdict we had the first president ever to be prosecuted criminally uh, in the united states and now we have the first ever to be a convicted felon uh, but there's a long road to go here uh and what's in what, what we're concerned about is because we have people on both sides of this uh political divide and we're, but we're really very concerned about what's in store for uh, our beloved America. Uh, from from looking at it from a sort of legal perspective, uh, it, it seems to me that the the jurors did a very thorough job. Uh, they were professional in their approach. They did their jobs diligently. And in fact, Trump's own lawyer Todd Blanche was on television confirming exactly that. Um, until the results, it seemed no. This was after the result. He he confirmed that, um, and uh, oh. the the, uh, the evidence, to my mind, the evidence of of guilt uh, was overwhelming. It was a very powerful case. But on the other side, uh, the leading Republicans are claiming that uh, like uh, they're parroting exactly what Trump has said throughout that it's all uh, politically motivated. It was very unfair. He did nothing wrong. Blah blah it's blah. It's a witch hunt. Everything. You can say, they lose. Yeah, witch hunt and all that. You, and, uh, you can say mm. you can make these statements from a political perspective, exercising your right of free speech. But in a court of law, you don't get away with that. Uh, in a court of law, things have to be done in accordance with the rules of evidence uh, and in accordance with the judge's rulings. Seemed to me that the judge did a very fair job. I mean, he very often ruled on objections in favor of Trump's side. Uh, he was meticulous. It seemed a kind, gentle man. Um, and uh, the, the one thing that does come out when they're making all these co comments about it being a kangaroo court and banana republic and all that sort of stuff is that they never address anything of in in the case that's of substance you know they never you know he took the position that he never had a relationship with stormy daniels which i don't think anyone believes even on his side so um and beyond that they're making it very very clear that they you know they they unconditionally support this very weird man i mean he's trump seems to me to be a very weird unpleasant man uh not just talking about his presidency and um, all, all the time i've known really uh, you know been following him he is a fascinating man there's no doubt about that but he's a very unpleasant man doesn't pay people and and just says you know outrageous things and does outrageous things um uh, but they're saying beyond that, they're saying that uh, if he if he doesn't win uh, in November, uh, it, it, they're not. Well, they're refusing certainly refusing to say that they that they will accept the result if he loses. And I think you can infer from that that if he loses again, they will again claim that it was all rigged. And he's all throughout his life claimed that anything that goes against him is rigged. Uh, so it's very, very worrying.
uh, and one wonders what's happened to the Republican Party because I've always been on the I've lent to the right in my political leanings, as you know, Chris. I've I've always lent to the right, uh, and I, I I guess I've always identified more with Republican politics than with Democrat politics. Um, but what has happened to the Republican Party? <laughs> You well, it's, it's the leader, and as I see it, it's the leader and only the leader that this strange, as you said, strange man who sort of um, uh, supposedly a businessman left all, all this money from his father many moons ago um, and professes and always has done before even politics hit his mind, as I see it, as a self-made millionaire who came... Who came you know, basically from nowhere back in, you know, 20, whenever it was, 2012 or whatever, or 2016, you know, whenever he started the campaign. And suddenly the world, as I see it, has completely changed. This this mad, madman, this oath of a, uh, who believes in, in dictatorship and has no political brain as I see it has, has decided that he wants to rule the world he wants to rule America everybody else is wrong he is he is only the one that is correct and everybody that uh, believes in him uh, thinks he's the only one that's correct and they are going to rule America and if they're not allowed to they are going to uh, cause trouble continually so it's it's like watching it, it's like watching something from a from a horror movie i would say it's um i likened it a long time ago to the to the emperor's new clothes do you remember that book mm. and he comes out and he is wearing nothing he's got no clothes on and all these people are going his subjects are going but you've got no clothes on, you know, they're looking, and he's going, no, I'm wearing grand, grand clothes. Look at me. I'm the most important emperor of the world. And they're all going, really? But you've got nothing on. I, I don't so remember. Going, I don't remember. I mean, I well, know that's what, exactly what, you, what they said. They yeah, said, well, but, what, then but weren't fine. some of them believing that you weren't some of them in that story? Isn't the point of that is that they were, he was going, look at my fine robes. And they were going, oh yeah, look at his fine robes. But there were others that was like, but or maybe only you. One person, I don't remember the story, as I say, but weren't they saying, oh, but no, he's actually naked. Can't you see he's naked? <laughs> so Yes, uh, well, think... yes, and I can't remember this whole story, but I just remember that bit and remember thinking it's, you know, I, I, the, the person that's seeing him naked. Um, I, it's a sound, know, it's it, a sound it's analogy. Uh, it, I mean, neither of us remembers the story very well, but we, we get the central principle of it. And, and I think it's a sound, a very sound analogy because he comes out. I mean, he's been saying all this stuff and he, and he says the same thing about every single legal case against him. It's yeah. Biden who's doing, which is there's no evidence of that, whatever. Um, Biden's doing it. It's all politically uh, motivated. It's Democratic appointed judges, and that's why they're deciding against him. And the jury jurors are all the same. And uh, it, so that is the sort of emperor's uh, not wearing any clothes. Yeah. Well, and he repeats himself all the time. Yeah, he he says everything thing. twice. He he just he 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 says everybody's. He says lie after lie when but, he but talks the, but, about the gagging you know, order. We, we we agree, and most uh, well, a lot of people agree that you know he's an inc incredibly divisive figure, weird sort of guy. But what is stranger to me is that all these people who in the Repu leaders in the Republican Party seem to have drink. You know, they seem to be intoxicated. Uh, by him they're, they're so reverential that they're prepared well, to completely alter the position so when they were running against him people like i don't know ted cruz was saying that he's a consummate liar and everything that comes out of his mouth trump that is everything that comes out of trump's mouth is a lie he was saying and now he's saying the opposite you get the same with people like bill barr who used to be his dis you know his uh, forget we call it uh, his chief legal man, forget what they call it over there for the moment, Attorney General, that's it. Uh, he was very con condemnatory in his in his what he had to say about Trump. 
and he's completely now supports him. And there's and I there's a whole list of them. Even Nikki Haley, who was the last uh, person standing <laughs> against him, who was saying all kinds of things about him, and she's endorsed him now. I mean, have these people got no moral compass at all? Are they really that unprincipled that they can say one thing a couple of months ago and be saying the exact polar opposite? <laughs> you know two months hence because they want to support their messiah uh, well i think that yes well it's very cult like isn't it i mean it, it he acts like a cult leader and these people who chant and chant his words and say what he says it, it very much follows i see a, a cult like movement and that's what i think is uh, very very scary for america and for the world and it's now looking, I mean, you've been saying it for a while, you know, what you're concerned about is, is that, um, you know, there are the, the, the other side now are, are you know, it, it could cause a civil war. And I just read in the paper today that um, I think her name's Maggie Waters. I think she's a, I think she's a Democrat um, um, of, um, in um, California. She was on MNS. MSNBC, uh, 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 basically, uh, which is a you know news channel, um, warning that the former president's supporters pose a dangerous threat to the country. She says, "I'm worried if he's that he's so divisive and that he's talking about retribution, and they're talking about revenge, and I think that that's dangerous." He's even mentioned civil war at one point. Talked about there would be bloodshed. She said. Well, she I don't. I wouldn't. don't think America has been as divisive, uh, divided as this uh, since the Civil War. Uh, um, but no, I think that's you know, right. It, it, but it goes, it goes so deep. This really, because uh, once the leading, one of the leading uh, political parties is saying that they don't believe anything that a court decides. If it if it concerns <laughs> yes. their you know their god <laughs> their quasi god, um, once you say that the, that you can't rely on the courts to do the proper thing, uh, then where are you? Because where are you as a country? Because that is what is going to happen now. The Republican Party are going to are going to tear down the legal system in, r rhetorically that that in their campaign to get their messiah elected, they are going to rubbish the court system. That's what they're going to do. Um, and, you know, one wonders what the end of that, what the end of that could possibly look like. If he, you know, and the trouble is that you can't sort of pick and choose the bits of the legal system that you like and don't like. There's, there's a bit of a quandary that I'm in here in my I was my just going to say that. Because, I was just going to say exactly you know, the same there thing. There are clearly big concerns about uh, Justice Samuel Alito, uh, who did the flag flying, flagging you know, at his house. He says his wife did it. Um, but he had a, an upside down flag hanging at his house and another sort of similar culty flag at, at his beach home or whatever, which gives the certainly gives the appearance, strong appearance of, of bias in Trump's favor. And if taken alongside rulings that he's made, you know, one that would be a reasonable conclusion to come to that he was un, he was biased. And yet, and and even if there's an appearance of bias under the rules as I understand them, you should recuse yourself. And he refuses to recuse himself. You've got that going on. You've got Clarence Thomas, who was another, you know, very Trumpy uh, justice. And then you've got this ridiculous judge, uh, Aileen Cannon, down in Florida, who's messing around, clearly trying to delay, delay, delay the. Um, the document case, the confidential uh, documents uh, that he refused to give back to the government, Trump, that is. You've got and all Farnie that going Willis, on. Willis, I but, think. But, yeah, Sorry, but, I just but, need to jump in. But and she's not a Farnie... judge, is she? I'm just talking about no, but Farnie judges Willis at the is... moment. I'm just talking you know, she's about... she's got... Yeah, yeah okay, can I just, just Can I just continue? She's... Could I just okay. finish my point? Thanks. Uh, it, 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 when I don't want to be... You know, I, I'm worried that here I am, you know, siding with the, the courts... And, and saying that they're making 
proper decisions and they're they're acting fairly but i can't pick and choose and say yes but here's the there's the supreme court that's terrible i, I think once you get although that might be true <laughs> uh once you get into that then you open it up for just well there you are you know you're rubbishing the one part of the court system because it suits your argument to do so and we're rubbishing the other part because it suits our argument to do so so where does that where does that go where does where does that end up but anyway you go on make your point about well, George, no uh, well i was Fanny, just going to no, well, going back going back to that i was going to say that there was, you know, twelve ordinary men and women on the jury who made that decision. So it was a it was a jury run case. But the but the um, as you what you're saying is 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 right that he that, that although he's rubbishing everybody, he he's not rubbishing the Supreme Court. And apparently Trump is going to go to the Supreme Court and ask them to to get rid of the uh, the hush money case that he's been found guilty of. Because the majority of on there are are already appointed by him, aren't they? They're already. I, I don't know Republican. About it's, I don't know. It's certainly right a, leaning. I mean, I don't know that it's. All, it certainly isn't all of them. No, uh, but they. But you they, haven't got to have all of them, have you? To to no, vote, no just a majority. Have... Just a majority. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the but the, the Supreme Court is definitely. Uh, appears to be on the whole a right-leaning court i mean they got rid of the roe v wade in fact it was alito himself who wrote that opinion taking away women's uh, reproductive rights um so you know it, it, it definitely leans to the right and that's because you know that unfortunately there was a lot of politics involved in the appointing of ju judges there yes dealt with it doesn't seem very thing. But, but, but isn't but, but isn't, my isn't point the, is, no? Can I, no, I just need to ask you a question yeah, because you're, you're, um, the 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 federal. I thought the Supreme Court are only supposed to hear from the federal court rulings. Although, although this wasn't a federal case with Trump, they still can do that. I don't they think decide. there's. A, I, I don't know enough about their system over there. Which is very foreign to me, but the but as I understand it, there would be a way. I think the I think the Supreme Court can ultimately rule on everything legal, but exactly. But but it's a long way off that. They they can't intervene at this stage. As I I don't think there's any route by which they can intervene at this stage. I mean, he hasn't even right. been sentenced yet. The case isn't over. Um. And he'll have to he'll have to have lower court appeals run their course before it gets heard by the Supreme Court, as I understand it. I don't know whether there is some kind of short circuit route that he could take. Uh, but but what I'm but getting back to my essential point, you know, the the concern is that both sides are are both sides have complaints about the legal system, um, and. They can always th so if you if you say to the if you say to the Republicans look it was decided by a jury as you just said it all seemed to be very fair all done properly blah 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 you can say all that but but then if you're on the other hand criticizing the Supreme Court and or, or Judge Cannon for instance who's not a not an appeal court just justice anyway uh, if you if you if you're doing that then the other side can say well there you are you're you you, you, you when it suits you you call the you say it's unfair. So both sides ca are calling it unfair. So where do you go? Well, it seems to me the way you go with that is you let the elect, because this is obviously an, a presidential election coming up, you let the people decide because that's what democracy is all about. And I suspect that Trump, although a lot of Americans disagree with me, but I, I suspect that Trump will lose that election. I know it's close, but I I I have enough faith in the the people over there as a whole that I don't think they will elect this man to the most powerful position in the world again. And it was very close last time that when he won in two thousand sixteen. It was very close, um, and it it's perfectly reasonable, I think, to argue that he may have won through his own election interference, which we now know about through that court decision, where he paid hush money to uh, the, you know, um, Stormy Daniels and 
false, which was legal, but falsified the records uh, to make it seem like it was a legal expense and also conspired with the National Enquirer guy, whose name I've forgotten again, Pecker, is it? Um, yeah. He conspired with him to plant false stories about his political opponents and to hush up stories that were that, that, that might influence the electorate against him uh, particularly the, the the women you know that he the extramarital affairs he had um with stormy daniels and the other uh woman uh he kept those he bought those stories or got pecker to buy those stories and hush them up um so that was elect uh, election interference so uh so we've got we've got all that to think about but also if he loses this next election the republicans are, are effectively saying that they're not going to accept that decision so they're we're still saying back. it yes exactly it's so amazing. we're still precisely so we're still back at the same point uh but i think having discussed all that and and trying to think about you know how what a worrying situation and a, what is a seemingly insoluble situation that, that we have over there this is supposed to be looking at things from a british perspective and i wonder whether a situation like this could ever arise in the uk and i've always I've, up till now i've thought not but yesterday Nigel Farage comes storming onto our political scene into oh, yes. <laughs> our election, which is now going to take place in about six weeks' time, and he looks like, you know, he. I mean, he's he's come up, come out straight away as well. He's always been a big supporter of Trump's, which I think shows him to have very suspect judgment. Uh, not that I don't, I, I don't, I know of nothing that Nigel Far Farage has ever done wrong. That's you know that that that's it anything unlawful or anything like that um he's never struck me as as that sort of a person he had never come across that he's done anything morally reprehensible I, or i know nothing certainly but why is he supporting somebody like trump when you've got with, with, with all the legal decisions that have gone against trump and he's calling he's calling this decision He's not coming out on the others, by the way, like the fraud trial and all that sort of stuff, and the and the E. Jean Carroll sexual abuse case, sexual assault case. Why is he supporting this guy and and calling it a kangaroo court? I mean, I can only assume that he hasn't looked at the evidence. Um, it's always the, been pally with him, hasn't he? Though there's but always been a bit of. It's I don't very know why. concerning. So Nigel Farage is coming out, and he basically, you know. You know, he's a very good speaker. I think he's a lot better speaker than Trump. You know, he doesn't talk all kinds of bullshit like and lie all the time like Trump does. Um, but, you, you know, it, he it is worrying that he supports Trump. And yet and he also is trying to come in with this. Yeah, let's tear everything down and reform everything approach. Uh, you know, everything's going wrong, which is r pretty much what Trump is saying. I mean, that's all. But that's all a little bit worrying. Um, and as I say, you know, his decision to back Trump, to my mind, makes his judgment very, very suspect indeed. And I wouldn't ever consider voting for him on that fact alone. Anything else to wrap up? Because we're at the end. No, no, I don't think so. I just I will start. You know, I'll just uh, just quickly just say that I said at the beginning um, when we booked our trip to uh, to uh, Florida, uh, I had no idea that it was going to be over the election. It is going to be over the election. So we um, watch this space. It's going to be quite interesting being there, both exciting and frightening, I think, at the same time. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, this, 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 is turn this is certainly a political war. Um, the like of which I don't think the world has ever seen before. Well, certainly not the, not America anyway, and not the UK. I, I don't know enough about other countries, but um, you know, first world countries, as it were. I think it's it's it could get very very ugly, and I certainly don't think it's too far fetched to be talking in terms of a possible dissension into civil war. 
But anyway, next time we'll be back with a much lighter subject, I think, unless there's a development. Yeah. We won't probably be talking about this case again For until the sentencing, unless there's a uh, you know unless there's a material development. But uh, we'll be back with something much lighter next time, which I think will be our talking about our trip and we do have an, an exciting uh, episode in store for you in relation to something that we've been hinting at a, a particular legal matter that we've been dealing with for the past 12 months that we want to report to you on um but uh, so that'll be coming but that's that'll be a bit after the, our next as i say much lighter episode about uh, our uh, trip to england's first vegan hotel in the yorkshire dales Plant-based, uh, actually, they call it. One hundred percent plant-based. That, mean, that means vegan. Um, okay, to All my right. mind. But anyway, yes. So we're looking forward to that. Do keep an eye on our Facebook page, the podcast "Refinement, Not Retirement." Uh, we have a Facebook page where you can engage with us, comment either privately or openly, if you wish. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.